I am very pleased with the implementation of this training workshop, which is focused on building the capacity of OECS member states to analyze qualitative data and to prepare relevant reports and which of course involves key practitioners from across the region. From my point of view, this training workshop is not only extremely important, but it is also very timely as many of our island states are in the process of or about to embark on the participatory poverty assessment as part of the enhanced country poverty assessment. And so my satisfaction at this stage, this very early stage, stems primarily from the anticipation of enhanced capacities for qualitative data analysis based on the knowledge that you would have gained and the competencies that you would have developed by the end of this week-long training workshop. I therefore want to commend the OECS Commission and the Caribbean Development Bank for conceptualizing and implementing this training workshop which is expected to positively impact the effectiveness of the participatory poverty assessment in member states. I have noted the methodology for delivery of the contents of this workshop, and it is my hope that the practical exercises that you will go through together will engender the confidence necessary for application of the various analytical tools upon your return to your various jurisdictions. As I reflected on the core of this training workshop, I was reminded of the ever-growing emphasis on evidence-based decision-making and evidence-informed programming with respect to all types of projects or initiatives across all sectors. It's no different for the social sector. The emotional argument does not work anymore. We have to provide the evidence. And so, whether it be for resource mobilization purposes or just to support policy and programming, we have to be able to provide the evidence of what it is that we're doing and how it is that our activities impact lives. It is also important to note that alongside this emphasis on evidence to support policy and decisions is an acknowledgement of the critical need for development practitioners to strengthen the monitoring and evaluation as well as learning from implemented activities through qualitative analysis. In a nutshell, while quantitative data analysis remains relevant and useful and continues to play a key role in the development of evidence, the value of qualitative evidence has also been widely recognized. And so the methodologies and skills that you will learn today or over the week are absolutely vital as they would allow you to effectively complement a body of evidence generated by quantitative analysis. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, you are reminded that through sufficient qualitative evidence, the capacity or the ability of various agencies, some of them uh, you hail from those agencies, to engage in appropriate programming that takes into account the needs and the wishes as well as the context of the population is strengthened. And this of course lends itself to people-centered development initiatives, which is what we really want and what we really need in the region. I'm sure you will agree with that. As lamented by Chambers and cited in an article titled Qualitative Research for Development, a guide for practitioners, too often, and I'm quoting here, too often local perspectives have been neglected in the design, implementation, and evaluation of programs despite local voices containing crucial information that can help development practitioners understand pathways to program success and failure. These local voices are extremely important and we need to find ways of ensuring that they can influence policy and they can influence programming if we want to be effective at various levels, particularly at the community level. And I have to put that in there because I've always worked at the community <laughs> level all my life, so I have to put in that plug for the communities. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the crux of the matter lies in the fact that data collection and analysis, both qualitative and quantitative, is integral to national development strategies and that we must resolve to continue our efforts towards complete integration. So it's not a bias towards quantitative or qualitative. They complement each other, and we need to recognize that and foster that integration. 
I am of the firm belief that there must be complete understanding of what people need and why they are behaving in certain ways in order to fully address their needs. I also believe that the applicability and impact of qualitative research within the scientific community and in a greater social context is dependent on the effective dissemination of the findings. And in that regard, the profound significance of your reports cannot be overemphasized. Remember that the ability to effectively communicate complex ideas is critical to facilitate comprehension and eventual utility of research findings or translation into practice in ways that will be effective or in ways that will effect change and will benefit others. So it's not just about doing the research and having tons and tons of data, it's about how you present it so that people understand it and that it, it influences policy. It is my hope that this forum will be used as a platform for knowledge exchange and skills transfer as we work towards an evidence-based environment in support of our development agenda. I look forward to five days of intense sharing and learning and the successful achievement of the objectives of this workshop. Welcome again, everyone. Thank